I would like to invite Sarah Cheng to come forward. Let's give a warm welcome. Praise the Lord. So I want to thank you for inviting me. And um, before I start, um, would you just join me in prayer? Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word and to share your journey in my life. But really, I, I pray that you hide me behind the cross and that every word that comes out of my mouth will be you speaking. Every song that I sing will be your melody. And every insight that you give me may it be your wisdom being sown in the seeds of uh, these wonderful people here. So we commit this time ahead to you, um, and we pray that you continue to be with us in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So before I start singing, um, I want to share a couple of verses with you, which is on my PowerPoint slide. Ah, okay, that's the title. Next. Next slide. Okay, never mind. I also have the verse on my phone. Just now I was frantically pasting it and cutting it during worship because I realized I can't see the screen. Ah, okay. So this is from John um, chapter 1. Um, I will just read it as fast as I can. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, yet his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Okay, I'm not going to read the second half of that, but basically they're saying, but being born of God. It's not just of human decision, but being born of God. And then the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. There's some things I just want to highlight from this verse. Uh, it's a very long verse. The first thing that stood out to me was that, first of all, without Jesus, we can do nothing because through him all things are made. The second thing, this principle of life, is that light will always overcome the darkness. Okay? No matter where we are, if there's a darkness, once a light comes on, the darkness will have to run away. And the final thing is that all who have received Jesus, who is the light, who is the light, the true light of the world, have the right to become children of God. In John chapter 8, verse 4 to 12, or rather, is it 4 to 12? Or is it verse 12? It says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. I'm going to share this song with you, and um, I was writing this song with this verse in my mind um, about how it is sometimes very difficult to see this light. And um, I won't say much more about the song because there are words in the song too. It's called To Where You Are. <laughs> So this is a new song, it's not been recorded yet, but it's going to be my new EP that I actually, no, actually I have recorded it, it just hasn't been released. I just finished recording it today. But uh, this is the piano version. Gotta come to my listening party if you wanna hear the arrangement. Anyway, more about that later.
First time I'm playing this song on the piano by myself. So thanks for letting me practice. Um, where's my slides? So I'm going to show you some very graphic images. If you're uncomfortable with graphic images, be warned. Okay. Oh wow, the colors are distorted. So that's actually a red car. It looks purple. Um, so I was in that car two years ago, driving. And I lost control of my car while trying to change lanes. So this was just three days after I was um, performing with Corinne May, who's another singer-songwriter, a uh, Catholic singer-songwriter, but sings about God. And uh, her latest album had Hallelujahs inside. And three days after, we had that amazing concert at Gardens by the Bay. I got into this terrible accident where, can you see that white lorry over there? Yeah, that white lorry smashed into my car. So my car was like that. Lost control crossed the road like that and then the white lorry came like that and hit the passenger side somehow in that split second um, if you can see the only hole created was that hole on the impact of the collision C can you see on the right my driver's side is intact and the windscreen is intact so somehow in a split second somehow my body got flung out of the car and I landed on the pavement on the other side of the road so a few miracles happened first of all how did I get out of the car it's not understandable how I got out of the car because I did not walk out 
the new paper, they didn't get the facts right. They say, women driver walks out. No. <laughs> I, I got flung out of the car. <laughs> and when I was at the A&E, they were amazed because most people who get flung out of their cars, they either die or they... Because they get hit by other cars usually, or they get paralyzed because they break their neck or something the way they land. But somehow, I only ended up with a gum injury, a laceration on my leg, scratches and bruises and very tight muscles, but nothing at all, like no broken bones, no blood clot, no fractures. My brain was okay. They put me in a neck brace just to be safe, but actually there was nothing wrong. <laughs> and they, they came around and they said, you know, you're really doing very well, just relax, you know. Most people have a very high rate of M&M, not sweets, it's morbidity and mortality. <laughs> and, um, you know, this is one of the redeeming things that has happened to my life, and I feel that my, my life has been redeemed uh, many times over. This is one of these incidents. Um, I was in the middle of producing my album Brand New back then, and we hadn't started recording because I was working with Corinne's husband. He was producing the album, and we were all like, okay, after the concert's over, we will start recording because everybody's too busy preparing for the concert. Um, and so this put me out of action for a few um, no, for yeah, a few weeks, about four or five weeks. Um, and then after that, I had to record because I was supposed to launch the album with a ticketed concert in September that year. So we had to get it out. Um, I used to share about this as one of my main testimonies of my life. Um, but this is honestly a two-year-old testimony. And what is a testimony if it stays the same? I used to share this song called Just Me, which you can hear in my album. And it's a song I wrote immediately after the accident about how I believed life was worth so much more, and um, how I'm not just me, but also just me because I have a destiny to follow. Um, you know, I'm making that story very short. <laughs> but yeah, you can hear the song on the album if you want. Um, and and um, I also came up with another song after the accident called Love Shape Void, which I will share with you later. Um, but what I really want to share, um, next, next slide, is, and why am I talking about this testimony, is because I've been a Christian for a long time of my life. I grew up in a Christian family. Anybody? Christian family? Oh, okay, a few. And, um, you know, sometimes, can I sit down? Sometimes it's really easy for us to take it for granted because, you know, we have God and we have our parents and our parents tell us about God. And um, I was always really good at... Oh, no, the people behind cannot see me. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe I take the chair. Okay, is that better? Sorry. <laughs> and, um, and I grew up learning memory verses very well. And, you know, like, fastest fingers first. Like, which verse is about faith? And then I hear someone say, Hebrews 11 verse 1. Ah, but I flip first. So I'm like, I have it. <laughs> and... Um, I'm very competitive by nature, um, and I and and I and I and I used to do well in school, um, you know. And and I think in many ways, my parents always um, felt that I was uh, a, a good example, in a sense, for my for my younger siblings. And then I think sometimes my younger siblings resented that, but that's another story. The point is, I grew up in a Christian family, and I was always very good at at at, at being Christian. And um, there's an incident that finally shook my entire life. And uh, that was when I got into a relationship with my now husband. Um, and back then, where we were teenagers, not knowing anything about anything, and having parents who were very conservative about relationships, fell into an unhealthy sexual relationship. And um, the thing about about Christian girls and Muslim girls and actually Catholic girls and why Christian, Catholic and Muslim girls tend to have higher rates of pregnancies than girls who are street smart are because these girls never ever plan to not get pregnant because they always feel that, you know, I'm a good person. I will never be in that situation where I'm going to be in that situation where I'm going to be compromised. And so I was one of that percentage of girls who felt I was invincible and I would never be susceptible to that just because I was a good Christian girl. And I only learned, by the way, this statistic when I was in university, too late. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and that, really, that really changed my entire life. Um, 
And, uh, and and one of the songs that I wrote uh, from this new from my previous album, brand new. Okay, I keep saying previous. Actually, it's still the current album because my new one hasn't come out. But I have a listening party next week, so I keep thinking that's old. But my current album, brand new, which is not so new anymore, is called Parallel Lives. And at first, I wrote this song about a long distance relationship about my that my friend had gone through. Anybody gone through long distance relationships? Only one, uh. <laughs> two, three, me. <laughs> because my husband has been away in Holland for 10 months. So at the time I wrote the song, I didn't have a long distance relationship. Then it became prophetic. Anyway, <laughs> I, I, wrote, I wrote this for my friend because she had this on and on off again boyfriend. And it was like her only boyfriend, but she, they went away to study at different schools. And then, you know, they were not able to be together. Then they came back, back to Singapore, start working. And then they broke up. No, then they got to back together. Then we're like, yay, finally. Then they broke up again. And we're like, why? <laughs> and then and then and then I talked I talked to her separately. She said, Oh, because he's going to do his like masters in Stanford. And uh, you know, he's just too high maintenance and it's da da da. <laughs> and yeah, because he always wanted her to go attend all these family dinners and stuff. And 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 at the end, after this conversation, then we went one whole round. We're like, okay, could you go here to meet this guy to date these other people? And then we went one whole round, la, you know. And then she actually finally admitted. She said, actually, the only person I could ever see myself with is that guy. And I just felt so sad for her then. I just said, then why are you not getting there together? <laughs> so sad. And so I, I wrote that song initially. I started writing that song, Parallel Lives about that thought, about, oh, she's going to be here, and he's going to be there. And, and then halfway after writing that song, I, I couldn't finish that song. Um, I couldn't find anything, any material to draw from, and I had to look within myself. And I realized how, for myself, for many, many years, living um, a so-called good Christian life was, was, such a, was such a lie. I had pretended to be a good Christian, and I thought I could be a good Christian just by knowing about God, but I never really knew God. I, re I never really knew his heart, and I never really obeyed him, um, you know, because if I did obey him, I wouldn't have been in that entire situation um, of like a teenage pregnancy. So I wrote Parallel Lives. To finish the song, I, I, I wrote it as a call to God and say, you know, God, I, I now realize how, how, how terrible I was before and how I was just living this two parallel lives. Like one appeared to be okay and the other, on the other hand, I'm just not even obeying your word at all. And I don't want to do that anymore, you know, God. I just want to meet you. How many of you just want to meet God? You, you, know, you just want to meet Him. You just want to see God. You are here in my, in my life and I can hear your voice. And so parallel lives became that call, um, that call to God. So I'll sing it for you now. Um, I think I need the minus one for this song. the 
go back to my Bible verses and talk about why I'm sharing about this journey. And um, the point is that we know Jesus is the light and we know he's the way and we know that light can overcome the darkness. But when will you decide to step out of that darkness and accept the light? Now, I was walking in darkness when I was in a relationship with my then boyfriend, now husband, but my parents did not approve because they felt I was too young for a relationship. And I was walking in darkness because I didn't obey my parents and therefore did not obey God. And um, the, uh, the, 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 the saddest thing about my story at that point was that me and my then boyfriend, we decided that we were going to end the relationship. And um, we were like, you know, we are both Christians. We're both from God-fearing families. And we both served in the worship ministries. And we're like, this is not happening. We really have to stop. And then the moment we broke up, like two weeks later, I find out that I'm pregnant. And so we're like, why God? We just repented. We just decided that we're not going to live this life anymore. Like why, why does this have to happen? You know, and, um, and it, it was happening at, at a very crucial time of my life, which was the year I was taking my A-level exams. So can you imagine I had exams to take that year? And the first thing that came to my mind was maybe I should just abort the baby. What's my next slide? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So I'm not going to read that out, but you can just ponder on that. And why do I say that? It's because you can't be the light of the world if you can't be salt if you're not salty, and you can't be the light of the world if you're not walking in the light. And there was no way I was going to ab be able to be a testimony if I was continued to live my life like that. And if I had decided to abort the child, it would be making two wrongs, right? Two wrongs don't really make a right. And I would, I could, I had that decision right there. And I remember I had one of my best friends with me. And she said, Sarah, I know you're going to be a good mother. She said, you know, and, and I realized how much life meant to her because she had a Down syndrome brother um, and, and her mom had to make a decision whether or not to abort this baby. And she said, you have to keep this baby because it's yours and you're going to be a good mother. 
And she said to me, you are one of the strongest people I know. If there's anybody who can be pregnant, do her A-levels, and raise a child, I think it's you. <laughs> I'm like, you have such great faith in me. <laughs> and I, re I really thank God for, for this friend of mine. I mean, she grew up with me, and um, she's also from a very strong Christian principled family. And actually, she's the one I wrote Parallel Lives about. And <laughs> <laughs> and and um, and and so and so after discussing with with my then boyfriend, you know, before we decided to tell our parents what was going to happen, we said no, we're going to keep the baby and we want to get married. It's crazy, right? It's crazy, and and um, it was a very difficult journey, and there was a very dark few months that happened. That that that, that basically our families had to struggle to deal with the situation, but. But it was, it was it, for me, it was a process of stepping out of the darkness, you know, because it, is, it was taking responsibility for our mistakes and our decisions, but also, also having a chance to be redeemed, you see, because of our sin and of our mistakes. The amazing thing is that there is new life created. And what does God say about life? Life is from God. Life is from Jesus. And through Jesus, all things are made. So somehow, strangely, in, 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 in the mistakes that we made, there was something that could be good, right? Because this life is innocent, right? What else is on my slide? Next. I have no idea. But this photo I want to show you. Where's my photo? Next. Next. <laughs> you see, I don't have the photo on my phone, so you have to show it. <laughs> I wish I had a clicker. <laughs> oh, sorry. Did you guys get to see the lyrics? Oops. Sorry. Next. <laughs> Oh, okay. So that's my really handsome husband and my really beautiful daughter. And um, this was just taken in June. We went to visit my husband in Holland. And um, now this year is my like ninth wedding anniversary. I bet that's more than any of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bragging, I'm just saying a fact. It's, 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 it's quite inconceivable sometimes. Um, and um, I... I think it's been a very long journey for me to come to this point where I can openly share about the redemption of my past because when my daughter was young, I wanted to protect her, you know, and I didn't want people to talk. But, you know, I'm now confident and I'm mature enough to share this with you because I believe that Jesus has paid for my sins and whatever mistakes I've made in the past, he has made it for good. And all things work for the good of those who are called according to his purpose and love and obey him. And now that I want to love and obey him, I believe all things are going to work for my good and they're going to work for your good. Today it was very funny as um, the worship was going on and actually before I came here, it crossed my mind that maybe some of you have been in situations or have had friends who have been in situations where they've had abortions. And I want, to ch I want to share with you a verse, which I don't know if it's here. And it is, and it is about, it is from the, the story of, not the story, but the anecdote of Jesus and the adulterous woman. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What did you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him, but Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and said, All right, but let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning with the oldest, until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the women. Then Jesus stood up and said to the woman, Where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. 
You see, Jesus brings forgiveness to anybody who is willing to come forward to him. And all he says is that I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. And I get the sense that some of us today may be feeling like that. There's a mistake that we've made in the past that we feel we've not been forgiven for. Now, Jesus is going to tell you today, he condemns you no more. He has already set you free from that sin in the past. Go and sin no more. And we must go out rejoicing because Jesus has already forgiven us and we can be brand new. It doesn't matter what we were in the past. It doesn't matter what we were yesterday. It only matters what we are going to be today and tomorrow because his mercies are new every morning. Amen? And, um, and so I want to... I want to share with you that last song, Love Shaped Void. But before I do that, I have to fulfill the requirements of what I was supposed to share about shining in the marketplace. But you see, why I've come through all this is because I have to share with you first foundation, Jesus is a light, okay? Number one, light overcomes darkness. Number two, because Jesus is in the light, we have to go to the light. We have to walk in the light. We can't stay in the darkness that we know we're in. If you know you're in a darkness in some part of your life, Jesus is saying to you right now, he's going to shine the brightest light above it. And it's going to be very painful. Nobody says it's easy. It's going to be very painful. Do you think it was painful for me to give birth? So painful. <laughs> but you know, then after that, when the baby comes out, everything is fine. But <laughs> oh, actually, no, that's not true. Then there's breastfeeding and... <laughs> but, um, you, know, ba you know, basically, when Jesus first shines that light on you, it might be painful, you know, but, but if you continue to be proud, you are going to be disgraced anyway. Right? Because I was proud. I was proud. I thought that I could get away with this double life and that I could walk away. Right? And, 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 and there was disgrace. I wasn't able to go collect my A-level results. I did really well, thanks to God. Really God's grace. I don't know how I did that. I got like six distinctions for my A-levels. Like, what? And everybody who like, gets like at least three three or four distinctions, like goes on stage and shakes the hand of the principal, I didn't dare appear before my peers because I was six months pregnant by then. My, my brother had to go, you know? And, 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 and so I, I, I've been through that, right? I, I had my, 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 my fair share of that. And, and that really brought me down. But you know, even now, today, in, in my state, after going through all these accidents, I'm still learning, what does it mean to really be humble? You know, and to be humble, look at Jesus. He was obedient to even death on a cross. To be obedient to the people above you, to be willing to associate with the people who normally wouldn't, you normally wouldn't associate with. He is the light. Why? Because he can, he can fellowship with prostitutes and taxpayers. He can have meals with them and he's not afraid to be with them because he wants to be that light for them and bring that healing to them. So that's the second point. You have to walk in the light and go to the light, go to Jesus, confess your sins and sin no more. So assuming that we've done all that, now this is never a like, oh, you finish one and then you go to the other. I think it's a daily process. Every day we have to go through this because every day we sin. Every day we have to remind ourselves, look, the light of the world, the right, there's a right path, right? And that's through Jesus. I come again to you, Jesus, today and I confess my sin. Please wash it away from me, and I don't want to sin anymore. Then I can go into the world as a light, right? And as a light, I just wanted to share some things that I've learned as my, in my journey as a singer-songwriter um, and uh, ex video GJ, among other things. <laughs> Yeah, you search my name, uh, you'll find a photography website, you'll find Relay Room, my husband's design company, you'll find quite a lot of things. Um, there's, there's this thing that was impressive for me by, by one of my cell group leaders, and it was about how Daniel became distinguished above all the other officials and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. The king planned to set over him over the whole kingdom. In another translation, it says, da Daniel soon proved himself more capable than all the other administrators. Da, da, da. Because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. So wherever we are, not everybody's a singer and has a chance to 
dog, <laughs> like me. But wherever you are, you must be excellent because God has given each one of us an amazing ability to do good in a few very good things. I mean, a few things. Some of us are really good at just one really good thing, and that's fine. Some of us are good at many, many things. The point is, if you know that you have a gift for something, you must do your best to make sure that that gift is sharpened and honed like a knife so that when the time comes, you can really cut through someone's soul. And why are you going to cut through someone's soul? It's because they're going to see how dedicated you are, how humble you are to your craft, and they're going to say, I'm going to give this person a chance. Right? Just like Daniel, he was given a chance because they saw how capable he was. Now, he didn't ask for it. He didn't ask for it at all. He just did the best as he could in his capacity. It might take us many years before we ever get to a position where we, f we feel we can make a difference. For me, I feel like I've been waiting for all my life. I always feel like, you know, I've always known since I was a young girl that I can sing. My life was put on hold because I had a child. Okay, my child's bigger and now I'm back in the industry. But I still feel like, oh, I'm kind of just waiting in the wings and God hasn't really like put me out anywhere large. But that's, but that's the struggle and that's the journey that, that, that I am being put through because I am learning how to be a nobody just as Jesus came down as a nobody in a, in, a, in a manger, he was born there. It wasn't a huge birth in the palace. He was born in a manger. It was smelly. It was disgusting. I mean, honestly, have you been to a, a farm? It's just smelly. <laughs> you know, and, and what a humble birth. What a humble birth. He just came like that. And, 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 and at some level, we all have to learn that first, that when we can learn how to be as humble as that, then we can really start to shine in being really humble, but really being really excellent. On the other hand, we are not nobodies, right? What did the verses say? We have the right to become children of God. So do you dare to take that right and say, God, yes, I'm your daughter. Yes, I'm your son. And my identity is in you. I might be nobody else in the rest of the world, but that doesn't matter because your love for me is enough. And I know that you as my father will take care of me and you have a great plan for me. And final point, other than spirit of excellence, um, where's my phone? Is, oh, okay. Is, is something more intentional? No. Other being that excellent in your marketplace jobs. I know someone is a silver engineer. <laughs> I'm not sure what the rest of you do. But, you know, I think I believe that some of you have come out of much poorer backgrounds and and, and childhoods, and that you have been anointed and blessed and called to Singapore for a reason, in your place, in your jobs, for a reason. So in every single interaction that you have, may I challenge you to be as like John the Baptist, right, and to testify to the one who's coming. Because what Jesus wants to do is to come into the hearts of people now, right? And as John the Baptist, what we can do is to prepare the hearts of people to receive God through our lives, Right? As we live our lives, our lives are the greatest testimonies we could ever give. Right? It's in the way we, we ask questions nicely. It's in the way we put other people first. It's in the simple act of you know, writing thank you notes to people who, who we really appreciate. Or, or being nice to the cleaner or the auntie or the foreign worker in the block you know, because they're doing a job for us, not taking them for granted. It's in these very, very small things that sometimes we just, we're too busy, we're too rushed. And I have been very guilty of that, and I have paid the price. I paid the price many times for not appreciating people, not seeing people for who they really are, and not respecting people who are so-called in lower positions than me. And I've learned the hard way, I've paid, I had to pay a very high price for that. Um, you know, so please learn from my mistake. You know, every single person that God puts in your life is an opportunity for you to prepare their hearts for Jesus to come in. So with that, I'm going to sing my last song, Love Shape Void. Oh. Can I drink some water? No, it's very big.
Okay, this song is called Love Shape Void. Okay, just testing. It hurts me to see you falling again and again. I want to pick you up, but you won't let me push me out of sight and stew. I'm trying again and again. It could be simple Just put your trust in
want to share a final verse. It is a verse that um, has been given to me for this season personally, and I just wanted to share with you. It's from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 2 to 5. A voice of the one calling, In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the, in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall be made level, the rugged places a plain. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So may I encourage you to make the way straight for Jesus wherever you go. Thank you. I want to invite you also to my listening party that's happening on Tuesday. I know it's very short notice, but uh, it's on Tuesday at CT Hub. It's going to be at the Every Nation Church Auditorium. Um, and I don't know if you can see because it's covering, but um, the event details are on sarahcdw.eventbrite.com. It's, it's free for you to come. I'm going to be sharing about my new uh, project, my new vision uh, for doing bilingual music um, for the Chinese pop scene, but also doing English at the same time. And we have special guest, Nathan Hatono. He's part Indonesian, uh, if that helps. And uh, <laughs> yeah, if you're coming, I'll tell him to speak some. <laughs> he can speak what? Um, and uh, yeah, so if you're free, uh, come along. I think um, maybe, I don't know, Jessica or someone can help to share it with you guys later on. Also, I have some CDs with me. Um, next slide. Uh, I have brand new, which uh, Parallel Lives and Love Shaped Voids inside. Also, Chinese versions of six of my songs if you want to give away to some Chinese friends. Um, and uh, next slide is just some information about where you can connect with me on Instagram, Sarah CDW. YouTube, I'm doing a new video every week, although mostly Chinese, but I'll try to do some English for you. Um, and then facebook.com slash Sarah Chengdewin and my website where I blog from time to time. So... Thank you again, and I hope you have a blessed weekend.